result was the painkillers also increased the risk. There has been one time since I was 18 years old that I have been in a fight. One time I got attacked by guys in a parking lot politically, but th that was separate. There's been one time where somebody kind of got in my face and I just grabbed him and started choking him up against a wall. And that was when I'd partially dislocated my shoulder about 12 years ago. And I was taking painkillers because it was, I was just in so much pain. And I was on painkillers at the time. And I just had, it was like I was a zombie. I wasn't even on that much. I'd driven to the grocery store. Somebody smarted off to me, walked up and got in my face. And I just didn't even think. I just went, just grabbed them by the neck, put them up against the wall and was just squeezing their throat. Uh, and I mean, that's just, and I was like, whoa, whoa. And then I left. And thank God the person didn't call the cops. And I just thought, oh my gosh, it's the painkillers. I've been on the painkillers three days. And I mean, imagine our troops are being put on this stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And it removes inhibition. And it puts basically the animal centers of the brain in control. Very, very scary. Shifting gears, something that my dad, who's a dentist and oral surgeon, always told me. And he had little brochures he'd show patients when he was signing them up to, you know, get quarterly um, teeth cleanings. One of the most important things you can do in your life is not just moderate exercise and good, clean water and eating organic foods and supplementation. And it's not that I'm some health expert at Beach Boy. I didn't care for 15 years, turned into Job of the Hut. I'm changing my life now. But I do know what if I speak. I remember my dad, because I was a dental assistant for a couple years part-time, he would go over the fact in the studies that plaque getting under your gums causes infections. It's an area for really bad anaerobic bacteria to get into your bloodstream. They then colonize the heart valves and basically eat your heart valves. So it's very important to get your teeth cleaned. Deep scaling. And here it is in the independent. Of course, they're saying it's the first time ever. It's been no, they always say that when it's an old story they've republished. Not brushing your teeth can lead to dementia and heart disease. That's right. It grows brain plaques as well. Allowing bacteria to build up in the uh, chips and cracks along the surface of the teeth can lead to gum disease, uh, which damages cells around the body. You can tell Alexander Ward is not a dentist. No, it's not so much the chips on the top. It's the gum line down in the roots into the blood vessels, brother. It's not stuff so much going through the roots at the top. It's the bottom. The study shows that 89% of people believed to have bad teeth contribute towards somebody's age, with 40% admitting that they have never considered how their smile would be affecting their appearance. Later this week, BBC will air the first of two-part series examining Britain's oral hygiene, examining our attitude towards taking care of our teeth. Now, why is it a joke that Brits don't take care of their teeth? The documentary also shows that those with chronic inflammation can lead to damage of the circular system, circulation system and vital organs, with research showing that bad gums, I guess they do get it right finally, can be linked to the development of illnesses including heart disease and Alzheimer's. 35% of people said that a good smile was the first thing they noticed about someone, although many overlooked the need to look after their teeth in later life. Yeah, I mean, if you like dying of heart attacks or having your valves fail, uh, and it's not whitening your teeth or just brushing the surface, you have to floss and you have to get below the gum line. And if you don't do this every quarter, you're going to have to be numbed up to have it done. You're going to bleed all over the place. It's going to be stinking and a mess. And it's going to hurt for a week. But me, I mean, my dad, well, he's retired now, so I've got another dentist. But I mean, I can go in there, no deadening. They go way below the gum line. Bam. And it's it's just, my, my gums are all elastic. Praise God, I've got such good teeth. Uh, but uh, believe me, take care of your gums, folks. It's one of the most important things you can do. It's your first line of defense. Bags. Getting everybody whipped up with a bold gambit to show that the battle can be won. And that's what I'm doing here is I'm rallying patriots worldwide. Patriots that are pro-human. Patriots that are truly wanting to progress towards the stars. Not progress and be progressive like cancer, like the globalist. Who want to build a true liberal society of open ideas and freedom. Not a cult of globalism. We're here to take back those terms. We're here to take back the planet. And what we're selling, freedom, is a lot more popular than what they're selling, tyranny. They've just mispackaged it. It's easy to shoot down the globalists politically. You just got to have the will to do it.
If you Google the name Rand Paul and you click the news tab, as I've done here in the TV studio, Governor Pataki, Rand Paul made a terrible mistake. Rand Paul video violated Senate rules. You know, all these demonization. Lindsey Graham, it would be devastating for the GOP to nominate Rand Paul. And it goes on to demonize Rand Paul. How dare him get up and admit there's illegal spying that the courts have already ruled illegal? How dare him say they can't record every phone conversation without warrants? How dare him? He's just horrible. How dare him say the president shouldn't be a dictator? How dare him say that, you know, we should be nice to puppy dogs? They are inverting reality, acting like what he did was radical, but breaking. Out of Politico, one hour ago, Rand Paul says declassify 9-11 report pages on Saudi Arabian involvement in 9-11. And our very own Wayne Madsen is on the hill, right outside the hill in D.C. He's just been at the National Press Club. And he was there covering the historic presentation by current Senator Rand Paul, former Senator Graham, 9-11 Commissioner, and others who have seen the secret 28 pages and what it entails. Walter Jones, the congressman from North Carolina, was also there, frequent guest on this transmission. So joining us is Wayne Madsen to break all of this down. I tell you, Wayne, it's obviously very dangerous what Senator Paul's doing. He's a leader. He's a doctor. He's a family man. He's showing he's bold on the Constitution and Bill of Rights. He's showing that he's nonpartisan when it comes to defending our republic. He's the only senator to actually get up and try to shoot down the Patriot Act and put himself right in the face of the globalist uh, so-called juggernaut. This is true leadership. This is true Americana, and if we don't support this as a people, if we don't admire this, if we don't see this as heroic in the face of incredible tyranny, uh, then we can't get mad at politicians who become statesmen down the road uh, for not doing something. They're blackmailed. They're harassed. They're targeted by the media. They go through all sorts of dirty tricks. you got to be super clean to be able to do what he's doing. And he has really gone up a notch, in my view, from me liking him, trusting him, admiring him, not liking some of the politics he's played, but still knowing he's the best real politician out there in the polls who is a statesman that could beat Hillary Clinton. And he's not a warmonger. He wants to cut off foreign aid. But I tell you, I think he's in real danger now. They're trying to politically assassinate him. I want to get your take on that. But first, you were there for the presentation we don't have filters here and, and just have to read what, what, what Politico says. Wayne Madsen, former NSA officer, award-winning investigative journalist, best-selling author, West, WayneMadsenReport.com, uh, who broke the Hastert pedo ring news back in 2006 on this broadcast and at WayneMadsenReport.com, uh, joins us now. Wayne Madsen, thank you. Yes, uh, Alex, thanks. Uh, well, the, the uh, press conference was at 10 o'clock today uh, at the Senate uh, uh, Congressional Visitors uh, Center, and uh, Senator Paul led off the uh, press conference uh, announcing his uh, support for a Senate bill to uh, basically urge uh, the president uh, to declassify the 28 pages from the joint congressional report of 2002 on the failures of 9-11 and joining Senator Paul were uh, former uh, Senator Bob Graham from Florida who was the actual chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee who has uh, of course read those 28 pages uh, was the last final chop authority on those 28 pages uh, with the rest of the report uh, and he uh, urged uh, and he has been urging uh, uh, the White House. I know he's visited the White House and urged him to declassify uh, the pages. Uh, uh, and um, 
uh, Senator Paul uh, announced that he has two uh, co-sponsors for uh, this Senate uh, bill uh, that would uh, declassify the 28 pages, and they are uh, Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat of Oregon, and Senator Kristen, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, I should say, of uh, New York. And um, uh, he said if uh, uh, he's also planning on uh, uh, attaching this bill as an amendment to the Defense Authorization Act next week. So Incredible. There are two avenues to get this uh, get this through. On the House side, uh, we had uh, Representative uh, Jones, uh, Representative Lynch, and Representative Massey speak. Uh, what we heard from both uh, Senator Paul and uh, the congressman from the House side uh, are that they have resistance uh, from the uh, bipartisan leadership in both houses on getting uh, this through. They, they have very few co-sponsors, and it's quite clear that the leadership, uh, and that's Mitch McConnell in the uh, Senate and John Boehner, the House Speaker, and, and various chairmen of uh, various committees are just uh, trying their darndest to, uh, uh, to block this effort. And um, uh, Senator Paul made, something, uh, made an interesting comment during his presentation, he said that uh, the Saudi government uh, has expressed support for re releasing the 28 pages. So I asked him a question at the press conference, uh, who in the Saudi government would be in favor of that? Because the present King Salman uh, was the governor of Riyadh province before 9-11. And I understand from talking to uh, Saudi opposition forces, and these are democratic opposition forces, that... Um, uh, as several Al Qaeda members passed through Riyadh when when Salman was governor of Riyadh on their way to Pakistan and Afghanistan, and they uh, were given uh, logistical support, cash, and a whole lot of uh, support by the present king of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that sounds like in a movie when the guy has a dead body in his trunk and he says, "Sure, search my car." Just trying to play a confidence game. We know from different folks we've had on, like Springman and others from the visa section in Jeddah that they were basically ordered by the CIA to let the 15 of the 19 hijackers in, even though they were flagged as terrorists. But when I get excited about Rand Paul, it's for this reason. He comes out, he points out that they've lied to us about spying on us. He points out it's not been used to stop terror. He points out that we've been helping fund ISIS. He brings up the fact that, hey, Saudi Arabia was allowed in 9-11. Don't claim I'm against national security. Release the information. He really seems to be in their face right now. Uh, a lot of politicians are saying, we don't like your strategy. You're not playing it safe. You know, you're going to lose now for doing this. It doesn't matter. He's doing the right thing. And it shows how alien that is to the mindset in Washington. What do you make of what Rand Paul's doing and taking a leadership role in this? Well, uh, he had, uh, you know, I've, I've covered the politics here for a while. And to hear a, a Democrat like Bob Graham uh, former governor of Florida and uh, longtime uh, Democratic senator, was the chairman of the um, uh, Senate Intelligence Committee, was actually thanking and praising uh, Rand Paul for his efforts, as, as were uh, the, the uh, members from the House side, uh, including uh, Democratic uh, Congressman uh, Stephen Lynch from Massachusetts. I mean, it... it it, it smells and looks like old-fashioned statesmanship and actually trying to have a free country. Yeah, I, I, I was uh, somewhat uh, surprised to see a spirit of bipartisanship at that press conference today. I should also add that there was a, a, Virgin, a Republican Virginia state senator in the audience, and he has uh, also proposed a resolution urging uh, the, the 28 pages. Uh, you know, that's just a sense of the, uh, that would be a sense of the Virginia Senate. Uh, they don't have any authority over that type of thing, but he's introduced a similar uh, resolution in the Virginia Senate. Well, I happen to know Rand Paul for 20 years, and I can tell folks he's the real deal. Uh, they're coming after him more than anybody. I think that for anybody who's smart, folks should know he's then the man to nominate uh, out of the Republican field. Uh, the uh, first lady uh, from there on the East Coast, uh, Miss Lindsey Graham, um, has come out, though, uh, demonizing him, saying he'd be a horrible choice for a Republican nominee. But the word is uh, that uh, Lindsey Graham might be getting ready to run. 
Well, he has, I think, uh, he's, his announcement, I think, is uh, he's, either he's done it this week or he's planning to do it this week. And, uh, uh, yeah, there's... Uh, I, I would uh, I would urge uh, some of his opponents to just send people to Columbia, South Carolina. I've heard about him in South Carolina.